For, for Dallin, how do you build off of what he was able to do as a freshman? Well, I think hopefully it builds his confidence. He and I had a conversation just yesterday, actually, about just him building his confidence and in um, eliminating the noise around him. You know, because there's, you, know, you throw on, you turn on the, you know, turn on social media. That's what Dallas thinking this and Dallas doing that. Well, Dallas, what are we? Where are we at here, right? And so, um, Dallas is going to be an excellent football player for us. And I think hopefully, him having a, the year that he had, hopefully this will be impetus for him to really gain some confidence as we move into the spring. He's never been through an off season. He's never been through a spring. So this is still all new uncharted waters for him as well. And, and uh, but he's walking around with a different demeanor than he did early in the season. Uh, and much more confident and, and secure with who he is, kind of in his own skin. And, um, so that's been this. has been fun to watch his maturation. But that's kind of what you expect of him. For him. But then he comes from a home where, you know, where, where, where Aaron and Jatoya are going to be very in tune to. Okay, what are you thinking? What are you doing? How are you doing it? What's the next step? Um, so he, so he comes from a from a background like that as well. Is Xavier going to be with you guys? You think? No, he's, he's no, no, he's going to be Ken, I, I know Ryan just said Evans is not going to be participant in spring, but just sort of envisioning ahead for Evan, is he a guy who can do some of the stuff that you did with X when he was like coming? Yeah, I would like to think so. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely, would like to think so, and the time will tell. You know, he's a guy that we uh, have always felt was going to have a integral part in our offense. And, and, uh, going into the season, we thought that especially coming off the spring that he had had a year ago. Um, so hopefully he's going to be able to propel and, and move that forward and do the things that, that uh, we fully anticipate he can do. But the, the direct answer, yeah. When you have a player like you had in the Peach Bowl who says, hey, coach, I'm going to sit out for whatever reason, whether it be injury, whether it be draft. Who, who said that? Who said in the Peach Bowl said he was going to sit out? Didn't, uh, Tra uh, sorry, Travion sat out for his injury, recovering that. But when you have a player who will be unavailable, who has been such a big part of what you do, how does that change your preparation for that? Do you, how do you keep them included in this is what we're focusing as a running game, even knowing that they won't be able to directly institute that in the game? Well, does as far as as far as far as the personnel wise, all of our players are coached and taught our offense, and and to be able to perform the duties of our offense. It's not like well. He can only do this and he can only do We want to teach guys, and hopefully we want our players to be three down three down back if they can play it in, in all different situations. Now, some may be better at more adept than someone else at maybe certain things, but they all can perform, right? Um, and as far as giving a guy engaged, I guess if that's what you're asking, how do you keep a guy engaged? Who's yeah, not I, just, I just know there are some there are some programs that say like, okay, you're you're injured, we're going to focus you more on you know you go wherever you need to rehab it, you go to your athletic trainer, you spend time like that, not necessarily with the team as much as somebody who's actually playing and full go. Uh, how do you balance that in terms of we need to make this adjustment? We're going to take this going forward. How do you make sure that they are a part of that and learn that? Yeah, I, again, they still have to stay engaged in what we're doing. And yeah, they did. You know, Trey spent a lot more time with the trainers than he generally would, but but he's still in meetings and I'm um, still engaged with what we were doing um, and still being an integral part. Of it. And so you have to help them keep them engaged, that, that keep them involved in the meeting, still ask them questions. Now, it might not be all the questions like it may have been if he was actually playing. But they're still engaged, and they're and they're still a part of this 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 team, and a part of this family, a part of this unit. Because I think when they get disjointed and kind of off on their own, that's when you start to see problems. Because they feel like, well, I'm not involved, I'm not a part of anything anymore. Um, and and so, you know, you got to be creative in how you keep them involved in the way that I've done it, we have done it. Those kids still come to meetings, they still do everything that we do. Um, and because he's still a part of it. And it's not like you're banished to Siberia and never coming back. So we still have to stay engaged because when you do get back, we're not going to try to have to reteach it and the things that we're doing. So stay engaged. And, and for someone like Trey, you know, um, who played a lot of ball, obviously, he, he can be a great help for um, a great help for, for, for Dallin and guys like that. In what ways did he do that? Preparing Just like for I said, I mean, he, he was right there in the meetings and talking him through stuff at practice and talking through things. So he was he was right there in, in his corner and helping him out. And then when you get players like Chip Trainum who comes over from the defensive side and you get Xavier who was moving in a little bit from wide receiver to running back, of course that was a need-based thing. You just said it wasn't going to be a permanent change. 
do you view that as a fun little challenge to get them set up in a running back or to, to teach them? Of course, they all have their own different running back experience going in, but do you view that as a challenge to kind of shape somebody into a running back who might not have been previously? Well, I think it's just, again, I guess I don't look at it as a challenge. It's, I look at it as a necessity, right? This is this is what we got to go do. And, um, I think it speaks volumes about the guys like Xavier and Chip, for that matter, um, that are team guys that want to help the team. And okay, well, it's my job. If we're gonna if we're gonna put you back here, you got to be able to perform the duties at a high level. So whatever it takes, whatever time it takes to get you ramped up, um, then that's what we got to go do. And, and they've got to they got to grab and latch onto that as well. But, uh, but yeah, it is what it is. And then last thing for me, what does it say to you about a player who? who sees that need, who knows that need to step up and fill in that spot. And they say, I got it. I'm ready to learn whatever. Well, that's the type of people you want to be around, right? They're, 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 they're the problem solvers. And, and guys that, that say, we have an issue. How can I, it's not, it's not moan and groan and bitch and moan about the problem, but let's, how do we fix it? And, and they want to be a part of the solution. Um, guys that are consummate team players that are very selfless. And I think we have a bunch of those in our locker room. I think our locker room is, is, is littered with those type of guys. Um, and, um, Henceforth, we talk about that brotherhood, if you will, that you hear us throw around that term a lot. It's real, and um, it's guys like that that, that, that show that, that they'll, they'll do whatever is necessary to help our football team win. You know, you watch Xavier. Xavier's played offense. He's played defense. He's a stalwart on special teams. Um, he's played numerous positions in the middle of games, middle of seasons. It doesn't matter. He, he's the guy that just keeps – keeps, um, giving all he's got as a ship does the same type of thing. So those are the type of young people you want to be around. Why did Chip, last question, why did Chip ultimately decide to stay running? You'd have to ask him. I, I think he I think he actually feels that that's probably his natural position. Um, and that's always what he wanted to be even when we recruited him out of high school before he went to Arizona State. Um, but he'd have to he'd have to tell you that, but I, but I bet you that's what he would say to you. And I love having him in our room. He brings so much. He's a mature, again, team guy, very positive, you know, a very positive leadership that he brings out. Uh, um, and so I, I love that about him. And, and he knows that because I've, I've told him as such and, and continue to do that and provide that for our football team. Do you worry at all about the confidence of Travion? I know this wasn't the year he wanted. Injuries obviously played a part of it, but going into next season, is there any, you talked about guys building like that and building confidence. Is there anything? Well, I think the, the when Trey's got to get back out and start playing again, and that confidence will come back. Trey's a very confident guy, and he's a very goal oriented guy. And um, I know, it, 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 um, lack of a better term, it bothered him greatly not to be able to play before at a high level. I don't know about this cover, I know he'll use that as a motivation. Just knowing the, knowing the young guy like the dude, you know, he'll use that as great motivation to come back. And, um, you know, the biggest thing we got to guard against with him, me knowing I got to guard against with him, is uh, making sure that he's taking the time that he needs to take that the doctor's telling him not trying to do too much too fast and um, setting himself back. Because he's ready to go, I and mean, he's very, he's, he's very excited. To be, you know, trying to get going again. And, and again, since we've been off the road recruiting, you know, we've had these meetings with the players the past 48 hours, just really spending, spending a lot of individual time with each guy. Uh, nine of them, which is unusual, but spending some individual time with each of them about okay, here's where we're at. But I do that anyway. A lot of his phone calls when I was gone, because I'm, I'm very, in, try to stay very in tune to my guys individually about what's going on in their lives and. Uh, you know, going on in their heart and soul, what they're thinking, and, and things of that nature. So, um, I can tell you this: he's excited to, to kind of get himself back going again. Thank you, Coach. Good. Appreciate.